Tanzanian Standard Gauge Railway, the most advanced railway in Africa, is near completion. Mwisho wa mwezi huu unaokuja, yani mwezi wa mwakani, mwezi wa January, tutaanza rasmi kutumia usafiri wetu wa SGR kutoka Dar es Salaam mpaka Morogoro. It's just one of the many projects by Turkey in Africa. There's also East Africa's largest indoor arena, Kigali Convention Center in Rwanda, and Senegal's Olympic Stadium, which has a sitting capacity of 50,000, one of the largest in the continent. The Blaise de Yang International Airport in Dakar, a remodeled airport in Niger, and Ami Base in Somalia are among many others. Apart from the economic sector, Ankara is also expanding ties with Africa in several sectors, like education, through Mari Foundation, which is currently in 25 African countries. In aviation, Turkish Airlines now tops the list of foreign carriers flying to and from Africa, with around 60 destinations across the continent. On the diplomatic front, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has visited nearly 30 African countries. That's more than any other non-African leader. Turkey says its engagement with the continent is based on shared history, mutual understanding and a win-win principle. Africa has a lot of potential. It's the richest continent in terms of resources and I think uh, with Turkey's generosity to share its know-how and I think also the fact that Turkey is open to have a deeper presence and a stronger presence in Africa. Africa has the chance to attract Turkey who has many competitors to convince it and to lure it. La Turquie est devenue un, une destination principale pour les pays africains. On dit en général gagnant-gagnant. On espère que la Turquie soit équilibrée ses relations économiques surtout. Somalia is an example of the unique relationship between Turkey and African countries. In 2011, President Erdogan made history becoming the first leader from outside Africa to visit Mogadishu in almost 20 years. That was when Somalia was facing one of its most difficult times due to long-running armed conflict and drought, pushing it to the brink of starvation. I believe Somalia is a very different power the visit prompted one of the biggest humanitarian initiatives in Turkish history. A bond of relations between the two nations quickly developed and the engagements diversified. I have first-hand witnessed Turkey's contribution in terms of building capacities of government agencies and institutions in Africa. Somalia is a good example of that, with Turkey taking part in rebuilding and supporting the building of government institutions after years of civil war. These institutions range from ministries, the parliament, from other government agencies. So Turkey does not shy away from doing that. Relations between Turkey and Africa date back centuries. During the Ottoman Empire, the Turkish people had well-established links with Africa, especially countries in North and East Africa. In the 1960s, also known as Africa's decade of decolonization, Turkey was one of the countries that recognized newly independent African countries and supporting the decolonization process. Relations with Africa, however, gained momentum when Ankara declared 2005 the Year of Africa, heralding a new chapter in cooperation and partnership. L'ouverture l'année africaine 2005, quand l'Union africaine a déclaré pour l'année africaine, c'était pour tous les pays du monde, pour tous les continents. Et la Turquie a pris cette proposition comme une occasion pour développer nos relations avec le continent africain. C'était 2005, nous avions des relations historiques, mais nous avions aussi des relations quotidiennes. Ça fait presque 20 ans que nous sommes en Afrique avec la diplomatie tout d'abord. Nous avions jusqu'à 2009 12 ambassades, 2009, et actuellement nous avons en Afrique 44 ambassades et après la Chine 52 et États-Unis 50 et France 47 et la Turquie 4e pays diplomatiquement en Afrique. In 2008, 
The Africa Union declared Turkey its strategic partner. The number of Turkish embassies in Africa ballooned from 12 in 2002 to 44 with the opening of the embassy in Guinea-Bissau in 2022. President Erdogan has visited more African countries than any other non-African leader. The Turkish president has also hosted several African leaders including three Turkey Africa partnership summits aimed at boosting economic, security and political relations as well as cultural and historical ties. Trade between Turkey and Africa has increased significantly in the last two decades. Figures from the Turkey Foreign Affairs Ministry show that trade increased nearly eightfold from 5.4 billion US dollars in 2003 to 40.7 billion US dollars in 2022. Turkish companies are also rapidly expanding in the African infrastructural sector, creating thousands of jobs. Data from the Foreign Economic Relations Board of Turkey indicated that as of 2023, Turkish contracting companies completed 1,000 864 infrastructural projects on the African continent worth 85.4 billion US dollars, while Turkish business people's direct investments in Africa hit 10 billion US dollars. Now, Africa's main exports to Turkey are commodities and agricultural products, while for Turkey, the exports they send their exports to Africa are mainly manufactured goods. So the potential for other African states exists as long as Africans are open to reform their own systems and governance and economic systems. Key areas of economic cooperation include agriculture, manufacturing, infrastructure and transportation as well as tourism. Meanwhile, Africa's contribution to the Turkish economy and foreign trade has also grown. The government of Tanzania is currently expanding the country's rail network with the construction of a standard gauge railway. The flagship project consists of a network of about 2,000 kilometers developed in six phases. Turkish company Yapi Merkezi is among the companies that built it. The railway links Dar es Salaam, Tanzania's commercial hub on the Indian Ocean, to the port city of Mwanza on the shores of Lake Victoria, which stretches to Kenya and Uganda. Project which is among all the flagship projects are going to change the status of the business, especially in the transportation system. So if you find that now, if after completion of this gauge, we expect that Tanzania will benefit. The trade will change from the current to the another. So we are, as the Africans, we hope coming of TAC is a, is a way toward the development. Turkey is also making impact in West Africa. In Senegal, for example, Turkish companies are behind major projects, among them the world-class Olympic Stadium, Senegal Blessed Dyang International Airport, the Dakar Convention Center, an international sports hall, a stadium with 50,000 capacity and other infrastructure projects. Today, the Turkey and Africa are really present in a partnership, gagnant-gagnant, very efficace, based on legality and respect mutual. And that's very important for the Africans. It's on the basis of this partnership, based on l'amitié, that the two countries can really se rapprocher and put in place the mechanisms of cooperation that have permitted the financing and the construction of a certain number of programs for Senegal, the infrastructure, que ce soit dans le domaine du sport pour le Dakar Arena, qui est un terrain multifonctionnel, ou le parc des expositions, ou encore l'hôtel Radisson de Diamniadio. La nouvelle ville de Diamniadio que j'ai lancée vraiment a été en partie financée et exécutée par des entreprises turques. Other projects are spread out in various countries, including South Africa, Libya, Sudan, Burkina Faso, Togo, the Gambia, and many others. Security is a key challenge for Africa as it seeks to develop and attract more investment. Against this backdrop, many African countries are seeking to increase their defense capabilities. Turkey has emerged as a crucial partner in addressing these security challenges. La Turkey vient de développer ses relations sur la sécurité en Afrique aussi pour la défense des pays contre les attaques terroristes aussi il y a beaucoup de mouvements qui dérangent 
les autorités dans plusieurs pays africains. Et la Turquie, maintenant, s'est bien développée ses relations avec beaucoup de pays, surtout au Sahel. Turquie a joué un rôle important dans supporting African governments over the past decade. In particular, if you take the example of Libya and Somalia, this is well recorded. Turkey also has an approach that I think should be lauded of dealing with central governments and not dealing with opposition groups. And this one means Turkey, whenever they take part in stabilizing or sending military equipment or forces in African territories, then they do that with the consent of the central government. As African countries make efforts to provide clean water for millions of their citizens, Turkey has stepped in to contribute. The country partners with a number of local state agencies and non-governmental organizations to provide portable water to disadvantaged communities in rural areas. The Turkish Cooperation and Coordination Agency, TICA, has built hundreds of wells in African countries, including in Nigeria, Ethiopia, Sudan, Burkina Faso, Mali, Senegal and Somalia. Tika, which was established in Turkey in 1992, has also provided three kilometers of water pipeline, six 40-ton water tanks and a pumping station in Sudan. In addition, Tika has worked alongside Turkey State Hydraulic Works DSI to drill at least 19 wells as part of the Somali Clean Water Access Project. The Turkish Cooperation and Coordination Agency cooperated with the State Hydraulic Works to drill wells providing for the water needs of 126,000 people in a country struggling with drought. And an agriculture school was opened in Somalia to educate Somalis on how to prevent drought and foster awareness of the richness of their land. In 2017, the Turkish Turkish state-run agency DSI constructed the Amboli Friendship Dam in Djibouti to prevent flooding and boost agriculture. In central Uganda, the people of Kayunga received 20 solar power water wells donated by the Turkish Red Crescent to cater for households that lack access to clean water. The Turkey DNet Foundation has also built 890 new water wells in several African countries such as Burkina Faso, Niger and Togo as part of its A Drop of Life initiative. Turkey's cultural engagement with Africa has been a prominent element in Ankara's foreign policy since the late 1990s. In particular, the education sector has grown as an important part of Turkey's ties with African countries. This helps in youth development. For the Turkey, it's the education principal in our relations. Now, in Turkey, we have about 340,000 students international, dont 60,000 are African. Aussi, nous avons des écoles de Mari en Afrique. À peu près 20 000 jeunes enfants africains étudient à leur pays, à leur capitale, dans des écoles de Mari. State Run Mari Foundation runs some 175 schools in 25 countries across the continent. In recent years, Turkey has also increased scholarship opportunities for higher education for African students. Turkey Yunus Emre Institute runs several cultural centers across the continent, offering language classes and cultural exchange programs. At the same time, Turkish schools and universities increasingly attract African students. My name is uh, Nizar Abu Machano, pharmacist by profession, and uh, I'm a managing director of Izmir Pharmacy Limited in Tanzania and Izmir Group of Companies overseas. Machano graduated from Ege University Faculty of Pharmacy in Turkey. He's among thousands of African students that have benefited from Turkish scholarships. Known as IDB Scholarship in Turkey after, gradu after graduating my high school in, in Tanzania, Zanzibar. Then I've got this scholarship as well. So uh, for me, it was a, a very great point. Like many students studying abroad, Machano had to overcome several academic challenges such as language of instruction and teaching techniques. You no, know, even anything, numbers, small things in, in terms of communication to say, hey, how are you, small things we didn't know at that particular time. Actually, that is the most difficult thing that we face at the time that we arrive in Turkey. Recalling the years he spent in Turkey, Machano says he can not forget the hospitality of the Turkish people.
people. It's time after going to school, starting to capture some of the word, starting to communicate with them. We found it is very easy. We found the Turkish people, they are very friendly. They help us in a many ways. They do understand that these are foreigners. So they do understand like uh, uh, we have to help them so that to become part of our world. Machano's ties with Izmir are not only limited to his education, he also married a Turkish woman. Machano returned home in 2007 after he completed both his undergraduate and master's degree. He went on to set up Izmir Pharmacy, named after the Turkish city where he studied. I found uh, a love of my life in Izmir. We started as a friend, then we becoming lover, we fall in love with each other and we start to be much more serious. We married in 2007 and uh, 2000 and 10 we go to our first uh, son. Currently, Izmir Pharmacy is not only in Zanzibar. It has expanded to the mainland Tanzania, creating jobs for many young people. Machano says he is grateful to Turkey for the opportunity. The time that uh, we come back to Zanzibar, there are not much more pharmacy. Maybe there are just uh, seven pharmacies that they're doing wholesale, not like uh, community pharmacies. We start to give services to the community. We were listening, we were looking on the uh, prescription, if there is anything that uh, we found uh, error according to the ethnic of, of pharmacy, we were, we were trying to, to practice the community pharmacy. The number of African students studying in colleges and university in Turkey has risen significantly over the past few years. As of 2022, the number stood at 61,000, up from 40,000 in 2019. That's according to the country's foreign ministry. The rapid increase is driven mainly by the scholarship opportunities provided by the Turkish government. As Turkey and African countries continue to deepen their ties in various sectors, analysts believe the future is brighter for both sides.